Hi there. Welcome to my YouTube videos. This is a video on how to create the perfect picked up button band. We're working with uh, Knit 2 Pearl 2 ribbing, but this can be done with Knit 1 Pearl 1 or a cable ribbing, whatever it is you want to do. But we're going to learn how to pick up the stitches along the edge of the button band to create a perfect button band and some other tips that uh, make it look really good. So let's start by looking closely at the swatches that I have here. This is the ideal. This is what we're going to strive for to achieve. But this is what people often get. And just showing some of the um, problems that you can have in trying to put on a button band. This is an example of too many stitches picked up. So it flares out like this. And so the front of your sweater would hang down at the front and this would stick up at the top. Also notice that there's kind of a notch right here where this comes along straight, dips down, then goes out. Same at the bottom, goes along straight, dips up, and goes over. That's something we can correct. Over on this side, we have too few stitches picked up and you can see that it puckers the front of the fabric if this was your sweater it would pull up and you actually see this way more often than this over here you'll notice once you've watched this video you'll see a lot of sweaters where they pull up in the front and down at the top on this so this is too many stitches picked up this is too few on this edge it was bound off just in the standard bind off all knits and you can see that the bind off actually helps it flare out a little bit and does not look good. And you can see those bind off stitches are all facing the front of the fabric. Whoops, this is too bright. There we go. So they're all facing the front of the fabric here. And you can see every bind off stitch. So it looks like a design. And you might not want that design on your button band. This button band, on the other hand, I don't know why I'm getting the variation in light and dark looks pretty nice because what I did here is I bound off knit two and then I purled these stitches before I bound them off. That makes a nice straight flat and because you're doing half of them knit and half of them purl, it makes it go along the top of the edge, not facing the front or facing the back. Looks pretty good. Way better than this. Also, notice on these edges that there's no um, planning in advance where you started how the knit two purl two played out. So we picked up stitches along here, we turned the work, and I knew I wanted a knit two on the edge, so I purled two first, but when I came to the end, there wasn't enough to make a purl two, there's only a purl one. So it's really not balanced between this edge and this edge. Same thing happened over here is I started with my knit two, but I ended up with uh, a one purl on the edge right there. No balance to that. So this is all things that you have to plan for before you actually create your button band. So let's get into it and let's learn how to create a nice button band. As part of the planning process in preparation for this, and actually this is called finishing, but you do it before you start, I plan on how I'm going to place my knit two purl two stitches for this particular ribbing or knit one purl one or whatever your ribbing is going to be. I plan it out. So I personally, if I'm going to be picking up stitches along this edge, I plan a row that's going to be out here. Let's enlarge this. You can see there's actually three knits here, not two, because I know I'm going to be picking up stitches right along here and then that way two knits are facing the right side of the fabric and it looks nice and tidy versus if you had planned it like this and started right out with your knit two column you would have to pick up in here and you would have one column of knits showing on the right side of your which is okay it's just a personal preference but I do that uh, in, in advance. I plan that in advance. So on both edges here of this piece I have knit three and knit three. And I will also do that for my button band. I plan knit three at the bottom because when you have 
when you end, let's pretend this is the button band, not part of the sweater. When you have that button band come down and it's knit to purl to, you want to be able to see the two knits. So I have that extra column that I knitted in the ribbing. I did a rib three here so the two, because I know it's going to curl under. It's just going to curl under. There's nothing I can do about it. So what remains is the two knits showing here. And again, at the top, I finish off with the knit three because I know that very last column is going to curl under and it leaves knit two facing. So that's just part of the planning and it is just personal preference. Okay, so we need to figure out how many stitches we get per inch in the ribbing and how many rows we get in the stockinette portion. When we measure the ribbing, we want to measure the part along here. I blocked this already, and when I block the stockinette stitch portion, it does stretch the top of the ribbing out, but we want the part of the ribbing that looks like this to be the long along the edge of our button band. So we're going to measure it in here. So if this were a sweater, I would block the pieces of the sweater first and then measure the gauge of the ribbing and the, st and the stockinette before I calculated my pickup ratio for the button band. So the first thing we're going to do is measure along here. So we know that this is knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two. So it's a multiple of four, right? Two knits, two purls, two knits, two purls. So I'm going to measure from the edge of this knit two to the beginning of this knit two so I get whole multiples of four. So I'm just going to lay my ruler across here. And it looks like I get... I'm getting about three and three eighths. And we know that it's four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty stitches. So I'm going to write that down over here. I have twenty stitches and I have three and three eighths, which is three point seven five inches. So I would use my calculator and make that calculation, which we'll do in a minute. So the next, we need to measure the rows. Again, I'm just going to measure whole stitches. I'm going to start up with a stitch up here and go down to here. So an easy way to measure these stitches is to mark them first. I'm going to put a pin underneath this stitch right here, underneath the two legs. Can you see that? And I'm going to put, follow that column down, and I'll put a pin under these two legs of this stitch. I'm not going to count the stitches with the pins in them. I'm going to count the stitches in between. And it often helps to have a pointer to do this, because my eyes jump around. I can't, I'll be halfway up and my eyes jump and I can't keep track. So I put a pointer. Let's use something that's not going to leave an ink mark. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. So we have nineteen stitches. And then we're going to measure that between the pins. And we get two and seven eighths inches. Two inches and seven eighths is eight point seven five point eight seven five point eight seven five so we have nineteen stitches over two point eight seven five inches and now we're going to make our calculations so the first one twenty stitches twenty divided by three point three seven five equals 5.92 stitches in one inch. And then we're going to do the rows and we have 19 divided by 2.875 equals 6.6 .6.
So I would call this, I would round this up to six. So we're going to say six stitches per inch in ribbing. And I would round this up to seven. Seven stitches per inch, seven rows per inch. This is rows per inch. So we have a ratio of six to seven. So I often draw that out on my paper. It's easiest to do that. And you always want whole numbers because you can't pick up a half of a stitch or a half of a row. So I mark out seven. This is going to represent my rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I want to pick up six stitches out of those seven. So I would pick up in the first six. And then I would skip this one. That's for one inch. And then here's the next inch. Three, four, five, six, seven. I would pick up six. So I'm going to pick up six, skip a row, pick up six, skip a row. Now sometimes your ratio might come out, let's say it comes out to five to seven. So we're going to put our seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One inch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now we have to fit five into the seven. So we're going to do one, two, three, skip a row, one, two, skip a row, one, two, three, skip a row, one, two, skip a row. So I find that visually putting it out like this is a whole lot easier than trying to figure out a mathematical ratio between the two. So whatever your two numbers are, you put your rows out first, which is going to be always going to be your bigger number, and then fit your stitches into the rows. So we're going to pick up six stitches for every seven rows. So we're going to start doing that. Now, you remember, you're going to want to use the same needle that you used when you worked the ribbing. So if you worked your ribbing in a smaller needle, you're going to want to use that same needle to pick up the stitches along here. Okay, so now we're ready to actually pick up along here. Where are we going to pick up? We're going to pick up between the selvage stitch and the first stitch in of each row. When I blocked this, and if it were a sweater, I would do the same thing on the stockinette portion. I'm very careful to actually block all of the stitches facing the right side of the work so that I can actually see the selvage stitch along here. And then it makes it very clear that I'm going to be picking up between the selvage stitch and the first column in. Many people when they block they actually have the edge of their fabric curled in and then it's really hard you're constantly pulling it out trying to see where you're going to put those pick up those stitches. So we're going to start right down here at the very bottom. We'll magnify this and I'm going to put a piece of white paper under here because I think it's just easier to see picking up these stitches. We'll get our yarn Remember, you're going to use the same needle that you used for working the ribbing. And we're going to pick up stitch as close as we can to the actual cast on edge. So that's going to be right here. This is going to be, this is our cast on. We're going to pick up our first stitch right here. You can use a crochet hook if you want. Just be careful that you're putting the stitches on the knitting needle in the right stitch mount. So there we've got our first stitch. We split it. There we go. I pick these up fairly tight. Remember we're going to pick up six for every seven rows. So that was one, two, three, and we every bar represents a, a row. So we just picked up over that bar. We're going to pick up this one over the bar. So that's four, five, six. And then we know we're going to skip the next one. So we're going to go over two bars. One, two. That means we're skipping this row. One, two, and you can see I pull the fabric away from the edge a little bit. It makes it very easy to see where you're going to put your needle. Three, four, five, six. And then we're going to skip one. That means we're going to go over two bars. One, 
to whoops three four five six we're gonna skip a row so we're skipping this one one two three four five six skip a row one two three four five six skip a row now sometimes you'll actually come to the end of your number and have the very last one should be skip a row don't skip it you don't want to skip the very end that would give you a gap on the edge of your fabric one two three and we want to get one in the very top edge we can make one more four now we're going to count our stitches more planning two four six eight 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34. Okay, so we know that we're going to put a knit two, purl two ribbing on here. And we also know that we want to start with a knit three and end with a knit three. So if we just did knit two, purl two all along without the extra stitches, it would be a multiple of four. But we're going to add two at this end so that we end with start with a rib and end with a rib and then we're going to add one stitch to each end so those ribs have three stitches in other words we're going to have a rib three then knit purl two knit two purl two knit two purl two knit two purl two knit three so it will actually end up being a multiple of four which we don't have we have 34 stitches. We need to add two to make it a multiple of four or subtract two. I'm going to add two because I want to add that extra column at the top and bottom that I'm going to plan that will curl under. It'll curl under at this edge and under at this edge so they really won't show on the face of the fabric because this is perfect right here for what we want. So the way Okay, here we are on the wrong side of the fabric and we're ready to start that first wrong side row. So we're going to start by working a purl front and back. So we're going to purl into the front and then purl into the back. And then we're going to make the next purl stitch and that'll give us our three knits on the right side of the row on the edge. Then two knits, which will give us the purls, two purls, and so on. And we'll continue working until we get to the other end where we're going to end with another purl front and back and I'll be back in just a second to show that to you. Okay, here we are again. I just did two purls. I'm going to do two knits and then a purl and a purl front and back. Purl front and this stitch is kind of sloppy because the tail is loose here. Just tighten that up and purl back. You know when you do a purl back you come up and purl. Take that off, tighten up that tail. Let's turn this and look at it. So now we can see our little ribbing stitch pattern. We've got our knit three at the beginning, purl two, knit two, all along till we come down here and we have our knit three. So now I'm going to work a few rows in the button band. I'll be back in a few minutes and show you how to bind off. Okay, so I finished working the um, last row of the ribbing and I'm ready to bind off now. But before I bind off, I'm just going to check this to see how it looks. I'm going to just pull this onto the cable and lay it out and see if I like it. And I do. It lays very, very nice. So we're going to go ahead and bind off and let me show you how to do that. And I'm also going to show you how to weave in the ends. Okay. 
So we have a knit three, purl two, knit two going on. So that's how we're going to bind off. So I'm going to bind off knit, knit another stitch, slip this stitch over the first. This is a knit, so I'm going to knit it. Slip the stitch over. Now I have a purl, so I'm going to purl this. This makes a huge difference. Now I have a purl. Let me enlarge this so you can see up close. You can see this is a purl stitch coming up. So I'm going to purl it. Slide this stitch over. You don't, you just a medium tension on the bind off. Don't bind off too tight or too loose. Just normal. Will look really good. Now I've got a purl. And I'm going to continue to the end. I'll be back here in a second and show you how to do that last bind off stitch. Okay, now we're coming up to the last few stitches to bind off. We want to be really careful because we don't want to end up with those big huge bind off stitch at the end. So as I'm coming up to that portion, I'm very careful that I lay my work on a surface so the weight of the work is not pulling on those last few stitches that are on the needle. So my work is sitting on the counter here, so there's no extra pressure, and I'm very careful that when I go into these last stitches that I use the tips of the needles because I don't want to enlarge the stitch. Then as I pull it off, again, I don't have the weight of the project hanging off the needle, and I'm just going to break the yarn, leaving a few inches so that I can weave that in. I put my thumb and finger here to hold this so I can pull that through without enlarging the last stitch and then pull it down, being careful to not pull up on that stitch. And then I don't get that enlarged last bind off stitch. So now we're going to weave in the ends. So I'm going to put my yarn here, we'll start with this end, on the tapestry needle. I prefer like medium sized tapestry needles rather than the giant knitting ones that you often see. They're too really too big. For example, this. I don't care for those unless you're working with bulky yarn. Okay, we're going to turn it to the wrong side. And what we're going to do is we're going to work our way over to these um, this rib on the wrong side of the fabric. So I'm just going to take this yarn here and I'm going to take my tapestry needle. I'm just going to work over to that area. And I pull that corner down. Do you see how that pulled in? And I'm going to go, I'm just duplicate stitching right now to work over to See, it's invisible. Now I'm going to follow the legs of this rib up for a few stitches. I'm just winding my way through. You can really go only go one way. It won't work the other. So if you're trying to fight it and it won't go, try the other way. So I went down that leg there. Then I'm going to cross over to this leg. And I'm going to go up this leg just about three stitches. That's my granddaughter. So that looks pretty good. We've got that little tail there. When I lightly block this, I'll just steam it. Um, that won't come out. It pulls with the surrounding fabric and it's pretty well hidden. That corner looks good. Now we're going to weave in this one over here where we started. We're going to use the same similar technique. I love to use the ribs of the knitting for weaving in the ends in ribbing. So our yarn started here. We're going to have to pull it across there so you will see it do that. But we're just going to follow up the edge of this rib here just like we did on the other one. Then we're going to cross over to the other side. And then
then we'll go down the other side. So we came up here, and we crossed under here, and we're going to go down this side. It's very invisible. This is the wrong side of the fabric. Trim it short. And again, it's not going to pull out because it has the same elasticity as the surrounding fabric. You cannot see it on the right side of the fabric. It's totally invisible. Okay, so let's review what we've been talking about. We have discussed how to pick up the correct ratio of stitches so it matches the fabric so you don't have too many or not enough. In this only has about five stitches less than this, but see what a difference it made? Um, we also discussed doing a bind off in pattern. Looks way better than just a straight bind off. This is also bound off in pattern. We talked about adding that extra column of stitches here and here, and you can see the advantage of that because it's going to curl under it has curled under to the back on both edges. See it's facing the wrong side and here. But because we allowed for that, it the fabric comes straight across here. There's no notch. If you look on this sample, when that edge stitch curled under, it creates that notch. Because we did the knit front and back right here in the first stitch and the very last stitch on this piece, it compensates for that and you get this fabric edge that just comes out here really nice. So I'm going to be um, making some buttonholes over here and I have some future videos that will be coming out in the near future on a variety of buttonholes. If you like my videos, you may want to subscribe to my channel, and that way you'll get notification when I have new videos come out. I would love it also if you would like my channel, make some comments. I love to hear comments from my viewers. I will respond to your comments. If you have a video that you'd like to see me make, just give me a suggestion. I'll add it to my list. I hope you share these with your friends. You can put it on Facebook or Pinterest, wherever you want, and I hope you come back. Happy knitting!